Hi, my name is Key Marcello, and uh, uh, this is my guitar video, as you might suspect already. And uh, I'm going to talk today about uh, a little bit about my, my uh, playing uh, abilities, about my picking, about melodies and how to create melodic solos, about a little bit about rubato, which I use a lot in my solos, and uh, a lot of other things, and possibly uh, guide you to where to play very melodic solos, which I prefer myself. Uh, oh, you're also going to see some live footage from Hammersmith Odeon in London and uh, some other surprises. But before all this, let's tune up. Here's an E. Here's an B. A G. Is a D. Is an A. Here's an X. Just kidding. Here's an E. Here's another E. Okay, now I'm going to explain a little bit about the, the different parts of this solo and how it's put together so you can play it yourselves. Uh, first, I'm going to tell you what the chords are. It's a D over a, a F sharp, a G, and an A. It goes like this. <laughs> And uh, I normally start my solos with, I uh, try to build something from a melodic part. And uh, the idea for this is uh, basically a vocal melody. It goes like this. <laughs> and uh, to add some, as you can see here, this is a D chord. And since all these three chords uh, belong to the key of D major, So, so far, this is what we got. Now, what you just saw is uh, an example of tension and release, uh, which is a classical term. And uh, uh, I'm trying to build some tension into a very melodic part. Um, I'm using the, the fast runs, uh, well, a little bit to show off, if, uh, you know, to be frank, but also to uh, grab the listener's attention for uh, in an intense melodic part. And both those two runs uh, serve that purpose. Now we're going to a different part of the solo, which is also 
a tension and release thing. It's the never-ending bend, which is a very, an example how you can make something very simple, exciting. I'm not going to break down this, the, the last lick for you here. It's uh, kind of fast. I can, I can show it to you slowly once. Okay, this last lick is uh, uh, E minor scale, and this is a different form of expressing uh, the tension and release. Uh, uh, right after this lick, uh, uh, the chorus will come up, uh, and that's actually the release. And this is also different, and more kind of a, I'm basically just spacing out, doing something really wild. It consists of small different legato pads and licks that I'm, I've been playing for years, and it's a combination of all those. This way it goes. <laughs> This solo from uh, the Alice World album, is, uh, it's got a different start to it. It's actually drums and guitars uh, rocking out there um, before we reach the, uh, the chord changes for the actual solo, which is basically a verse and a bridge. And the, the chords in the verse goes like this. <laughs> so on. It's a, I got a D, major D, uh, an E, F sharp minor, E over G sharp, and an A. And before this I'm, uh, I'm playing a F uh, sharp minor scale to get it with the drums where I'm doing some radical blues bends. It goes like this. I'm starting this guy uh, on the 14th fret. It's a blue scale, F sharp minor. Uh, it goes like this. It's a pentatonic blue slick type. And then I'm going up to the 19th fret, and I'm still playing a blue scale, but in a different position. And after this, uh, uh, something completely different comes in here to uh, break up the solo, having a tapping part. Actually, one of the, um, uh, the very rare tapping parts on Europe records. And uh, this particular one is a two-finger tapping uh, thing. It goes like this. And that comes a very melodic part of the solo, which is uh, might as well have been a vocal part. You know, here again, somebody could have been singing this stuff. Uh, but uh, since I'm a guitar player and I, I want, I need to play guitar solo, so I play guitar, of course. You know. This is the way it goes. <laughs> And 
And this is, uh, uh, I'm thinking in F minor, F sharp minor here, and uh, uh, it ends on an A. <coughs> it results on an A here. So I'm, I'm basically playing a very vocal, melodic uh, um, singing, if you, if you wish, melody over this, of these chords. Uh, as opposed to the confusing uh, tapping uh, uh, tension I had before. Now I'm releasing it in a very happy sounding melodic uh, thing. Which leads uh, us over to uh, the, the, con the, the next part of the solo. <laughs> which is basically a couple of blues slicks that I try to include in every solo I do. <laughs> and uh, we're still in, the, we're still in the, the F sharp minor kind of, we're thinking in F sharp minor here, though the chord, the actual chord is actually D right here. But I'm, when I did this solo, I was thinking in F sharp minor. And after this lick, uh, after this last blues lick, it leads it into the, leads it into the bridge of the song which I'm playing over as well. And the chords to the bridge goes like this. It's a B minor, a, a major over C sharp, and a D. And uh, this is what I play over this. We actually have an A major chord here, but I'm still thinking in F sharp minor, and I want this to lead into uh, the, uh, the the B minor in the bridge. And so let me break down this last uh, run for you. <laughs> And this last fast run uh, in F sharp minor was actually building up for the uh, the climax in the solo, which is actually the very melodic last part. It goes like this. Now this solo is uh, uh, a two uh, two chorus, a double chorus uh, solo, which gives me a lot of time to uh, build it up and uh, to make it really melodic. And uh, the, the second time around, I'm playing this this same melody uh, an octave higher, just to create some more excitement. And so f the the moment I start uh, an octave higher on this melody, everybody knows something's going to happen, which is the, the run I come later to. I play the solo up till then, it, which is uh, some small melodic parts and, and riffs and slides. This is how it goes. Now this last one, I can break it down for you. And this part is uh, to build up for the, the second chorus where I, where I repeat the melody one octave higher. The chords we're using right here is the chorus, chorus and it's uh, F major, C over E, D minor, and uh, B flat. Mm. 
in this lick, I'm, I'm uh, uh, playing in um, F major scale. It's basically three parts of the solo, which is interesting. Where I'm starting the run. <coughs> This D down here is also on a on a beat, and and I'm aiming for the high C, which leads to the very intense melodic part, which is actually here again the climax of the solo is the melodic part. Let me show it to you slowly. This lick leads into the climax, uh, the climax of the solo, which is a very melodic part, uh, and uh, the rest of the solo goes like this. This last run, let me break it down for you. Another F major scale that leads to the last note, the last uh, last little lick of the solo. I gotta try to explain the concept of rubata for you guys. Uh, uh, this is something I do a lot of my solos, um, as opposed to playing uh, notes every note in uh, in uh, perfect perfect time. I'm uh, uh, playing freely within a, a couple of uh, points in the solo, a couple of bars in the solo. Uh, and uh, I can slow down and speed up as long as I have a couple of uh, marks in the solo where I, where I know where I am and I can I can always feel the beat the beat with, uh, where I'm at so even if it rub, rubs against the beat I know that I'm I know where the beat is and I can slow down and speed up and the main part is of the main thing is of course to to uh, aim for this note uh, which is in this case a, a C a high C and uh, we made a p computer pr program out of this uh, solo, and we're going to let the computer play it, which is, is going to play the solo very strictly, just the notes, as opposed to my rubato technique, where I'm slowing up and speeding down and just playing it. It's a feel thing. Here's how the computer plays it. The next song I'll play for you is called Hammer's Heart. Uh, it's a song I wrote for, for a guitar solo on uh, Europe's The Final Countdown World Tour. And uh, this sums up a lot of the stuff I've been talking about when it comes to melody and, and uh, 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 tension and release. But also, in a way, it's very different. The way it's performed, there's a lot of improvisation and blues playing, I would say, and melodic playing around it. And uh, it's a lot of chords to this one. so. Uh, you're gonna get the chords while the song is while I'm playing the song though, so don't panic. And it's a couple of uh, different things here. It's a couple of uh, two five one turns in here, which is uh, jazz basically. But I'm gonna show you. Uh, I'm, I'm playing a lot of different scale to this, but I'm also uh, showing that you don't necessarily have to 
use those scales. You can, you can still play a, a, the, the blues scale over this and it'll work anyway. Anyway, here it is, Hammer's Heart.
Well, this is the flight of the bumblebee, and this has got a lot of interesting problems. Uh, first of all, it's basically a chromatic, so uh, uh, it's a finger finger killer. It's also a very good uh, practicing scale. Uh, let me play, play it slowly for you. Here we go. Now, if you play this with four fingers, it's a it's a tremendous, a very difficult one, but a tremendous warm up for mm -hmm. for four fingers, where you're actually using all four fingers in different positions, especially the second part of it. Tell me when to stop. Flight of the Bumblebee is one of uh, a lot of exercises I have to uh, improve my, my picking technique. And I, I call them caprices because some of them sound slightly classical, you know, like Pagan Paganini's caprices. It's a killer album, by the way. Ch check it out. And uh, here are some of the patterns and, and, uh, uh, that, I, that I use. For instance, uh, this one I picked up uh, from Al de Miola when, when I started off playing. It's something he did on the record. Just the way it works slowly. In position. And so on. Here's another uh, uh, little exercise which uh, includes some, uh, uh, some lower strings. And now slow. <laughs> this involves also uh, string skipping. Uh, I'm still using the three note per string 
pattern, and actually the same uh, pattern uh, as before, the one I got from Demiola. And uh, this is the way it sounds, slow. As you see, I'm, uh, the system here is I'm, I'm uh, skipping the, uh, the B string here. And uh, out of this exercise, I made a, a caprice, uh, uh, a little song, not to be confused with actual music. This is just an exercise. This is the way it sounds. <laughs> What's going on, bro? Yeah, how you sure. doing, man? How you been? How's it going? Man, hey, how you hi. guys doing? Hi. Oh, hey. We're doing fine. Hi, how you doing? Hey, man. Guys, this this is not the best time, actually. I'm, I'm trying to shoot a video here, and, you know, the crew is getting paid and stuff, you know. They're doing kind of lame work, but, I mean, they're still getting paid and stuff, so. Man, it sounds, hey, let's go have some Indian food, man. It sounds good out there. You're finished, right? Uh, no, I'm Swedish, actually. But, but can you come back tomorrow instead? I guess so. Uh, yeah, that, that would be a better, a better time for me. Hi. Okay, guys. Okay, well, um, I'll talk to you later. Okay, see you later. Bye. Bye, Key. Bye. Man, I played I play one song on his solo album, and since then I, I haven't been able to get rid of him, man. <sighs> break that that one down for you this is uh, also stream a string skipping uh, caprice it's uh, it's the same kind of pattern as uh, the first caprice uh, and I'm uh, just playing it basically in octaves <laughs> And this uh, brings us to pentatonics, uh, uh, which I use a lot in my, in my solos, and uh, there's a lot of way of playing pentatonics, and I, I picked three examples here of doing it. Uh, this is my favorite one, where I actually, is, I'm using the three note per string method, but I'm playing actually, I'm, I'm repeating some of them. I'm going to show you a pattern here. I'm in A minor here. I'll break it down for you. There's another one named minor for you. Okay, let me play this one slowly for you. Now I'm going to play E minor pentatonic, which is, uh, uh, again, a three uh, note per string thing. But uh, since it's pentatonic, it, it means uh, really long stretches. Um, I'll show you how it works. Let me break that one down for you. I mentioned earlier that uh, in a dream world, um, to start uh, picking very fast, you should need like a, a one string guitar or something. And this is actually a, something like that. It's a pentatonic one string exercise. It goes like this. This is in the key of uh, E minor, and uh, I'll, let me break it down for you once.
And this is how I'm using this in a song. This one is called All or Nothing. So far, everything in this video has been concerning uh, solo playing, and uh, which is where it's at. But uh, uh, it's kind of fun to play rhythms too. You know, that's the boring time when the singer is taking over the concert and stuff, and you have to go back and you, you don't get the spotlight on you. So, uh, <coughs> but you can make the best out of the situation. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple of ways to uh, play rhythms with some solo licks in there. It's uh, stuff that are basically. Uh, uh, developed when I was I was the only I was the I'm the only guitar player in the band in Europe, so I had to the kind of fill and play rhythm at the same time. Here we go, mine in the gutter. <laughs> These are the basic three chords for minor gather, for example. B, e, A, and E. And this is what I'm playing on, on the B. <laughs> and this is what I'm playing on A. And this is what I, what I play on E. So basically, what I'm doing here, I'm uh, using the the B, the B blue scale, and uh, just changing the, the the bass notes and sometimes a fifth. <laughs>
as for the bat at home, um, homeland, I'm using a, a slightly different approach. Uh, uh, the chords there are C, G, and A minor. And I'm basically using the, the pentatonic scales for, uh, for each chord, and uh, I'm doing, still doing two string riffs. That's what I will play on C, and this is what I will play on, in, on G. And this is what I would play on A. The third song, uh, Break Free, uh, it's got more of an up-tempo feel to it, and here are the basic chords. E, B, and F sharp. And uh, here's what I'm playing on E. And here's what I'm playing on B. And here's what I'm playing on uh, F sharp. So basically what I'm playing here is uh, in E I'm playing the, the uh, E major pentatonic scale and uh, B, the B major pentatonic scale and the uh, F sharp minor pentatonic scale. Okay, guys, I think we have to wrap this up now. Uh, the neighbors are complaining and stuff, and and uh, I really got to go. But uh, I had a great time doing this. I hope you did too. But the only problem is that some of you guys were in a totally wrong position, so you should like work on that and practice. And remember, practice is the only way to get women in the rock and roll business. So uh, uh, keep up the good work and take it easy.